I don't know how to describe it other than like like a demon type of sound. But it's silhouetted, hulking, every bit of five and a half feet wide, 13 to 14 foot tall, pitch black. The one thing that ran through my mind when I had this encounter was I don't have a big enough gun. Your host, two-time witness and field researcher for more than 40 years, William Jevnik. Welcome to Creek Devil. Hello, everyone. Today I'm speaking with Rebecca. Rebecca, how are you doing? I'm doing just fine. And yourself? I'm good. Busy as always, but, you know, <laughs> it's just sort of the, <laughs> the nature of the beast anymore. Yes, it is. I understand that. <laughs> for for those who um, haven't heard uh, Rebecca's interview, we, we talked a, a few years back on another show that I, I won't name, but um, <laughs> uh, you and I grew up actually fairly close to one another kind of during the same time period. So there was a lot of stuff going mm-hmm. on in the Graham Spanaway area back throughout Uh the 70s that a lot of people weren't aware of. And and I'm still hearing from people occasionally uh, that Uh saw things. So what I'm going to do is just kind of give you the the microphone and and tell everyone, you know, kind of from the start what happened and, you know, sort of lead us through everything. Well, (laughs) there's so much. I mean, would you like to know about my first first encounter and how that, kind of came about and start from that beginning because you know i could talk for days on all the stuff that i've experienced (laughs) (laughs) well let's let's start with that first encounter because i think that's one of the more compelling ones right right and yeah exactly well um i was born in kansas and my dad and mom uh, moved us to klamath falls oregon for four years my dad was in the service and uh, once he retired, uh, we moved to uh, Washington State in Pierce County. <clears throat> My father bought a house. Well, kind of unbeknownst to us and something that, you know, I really didn't find out for, for a few years down the road. But the buyers were very motivated to sell. Now, this was uh, in Pierce County, um, I don't know, Will, should I, you know, give the area or I think I have before on on a previous show, correct? I I think that's okay because, you know, a lot of that stuff happened a long time ago and and the area's changed so much. (laughs) I know that's that's an understatement, right? (laughs) (laughs) Well, it's more developed, but as far as activities goes, um, uh, yeah. There are still things that go on. (laughs) Yes, but um, yeah, that was in uh, uh, for anybody who's familiar or if they want to look it up, <clears throat> it's uh, kind of the intersection of Highway 7, that would be called Mountain Highway, and 224. And uh, Highway 7, you know, leads down toward, you know, even though you can take that road to get to Mount Rainier, if you take 224, if you're going out to Graham. You know, that that takes you to the Graham area. And so this house that my dad purchased was like three houses, you know, right off of Mountain Highway or to Highway 7 on to 224th. And it, it, it just was, at that time, it was all woods, all woods, everywhere woods. And um, just a heavily, densely forested area. And the property that my dad bought, the house that he bought, um, came with five acres of densely wooded property. And as well, the neighbors, you know, houses, everything around us. I mean, when we came out the back door of this house and we were looking at the house, I still remember this. It's like you're stepping out, you know, you open up the back door (laughs) and there's the woods and when we lived in Columbus Falls, Oregon, um, it, 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 you know, we weren't surrounded by woods right there where we were at. And so it was kind of a weird feeling. And I can tell you that, you know, we, myself 
personally, I kept getting just a, a weird feeling. But I thought, oh, it's just because I'm, you know, I was only seven years old. I'm thinking, oh, it's just because, you know, it's, it, it, we're not used to woods because the trees were so tall and they were so dense that it was gloomy. It literally was dark all around us. That's how densely wooded it was. It was dark, okay? Even in the daylight, it was gloomy. But um, <clears throat> I remember when we moved in that house, and from the very first night, the very first night we spent the night there, you know, we kept hearing stomping sounds, and, you know, I remember getting up in the morning, I'm like, you know, Mom, did you, you know, hear all that noise out there, you know? Yeah, your father says it's deer, you know, and and you know, and you're thinking, oh dear, okay, it's it's okay. Well, if Dad says it's deer, you know, and I'm like, deer can stomp like that, you know. <laughs> well, I don't know. That's why. <laughs> yeah, I mean, this is the conversations that went on. Well, I don't know. You know, that's what your father says. You know, there. You know, sometimes you know there could be elk out there too. You know, and and your father says deer. You know, elk and stuff stomp. You know, and I said, but mom. You know, I mean, like the ground's vibrating, you know, they can do that. Well, maybe they were running. And I'm like, well, it sounded like they were walking. You know, this, oh, Becky, you know, go to your housework. You know, you better do your chores. You're going to get in trouble from your dad. You know, this kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, I'm to ask questions, you know, but I never really did get any answers. Well, the reason that my father bought that property is because, as I said before, the mo- the owner was extremely motivated and had taken, I mean, an unusual amount off the price of the house That's to pretty, get pretty out of there. Yeah, I found it interesting, too, because I didn't know it till later, you know. And then when you kind of grow up and you're looking back, isn't it funny how you... you if you've had a childhood where things like this have happened, I, I, I don't know, Will, if you if you went that far back on that, but oh, yeah. looking back, I can tell you, looking back, it's like everything is always looking back, and you're like, oh, wow, now I'm connecting the dots. Exactly. Now I'm seeing this and that. You know, but I didn't understand then. I made no comprehension of it whatsoever. And at that time, you know, we m- my father made us, do chores and we had to be outside so you know i had to help you know clear trees i mean he had my two brothers and me out there because i was a tomboy and um we he would make us clear he would start sawing down big old trees okay he was cutting and chopping down trees we got a wood splitter i mean we spent you know an entire year cutting down trees in that backyard to clear that entire five acre piece of property so we could fence it because my sister and I were begging for horses. And my father decided, okay, well, I'm going to buy motorcycles and I'm going to buy, you know, um, horses and that'll keep these kids outside because I'm, I'll be darned if they're going to stay in and watch TV all the time. You know, <laughs> he was real strict on that. But the week, let me go back a little bit. The, the weekend when we moved in the following weekend, and I believe it was a Saturday, but it was a long time ago. I, I really do, I think it was a Saturday. Um, we all, all of us, went across directly across the street from our house. And at that time, it was heavily dense, densely wooded, forested, county-owned land that had never been used, and nobody ever went out there. So we we went across the street and we went down into that ditch and we went out into that forest. I don't know some some I'd say somewhere between forty and fifty feet in, and it was just all moss. It was all moss. But we were standing there and all of a sudden we started realizing that there were huge footprints all over the place. I mean, there were different sizes of footprints, but they were really big footprints. And, you know, some were leading off to the right and going off as far as we could see into the densely, you know, just, just everywhere. You could see these trails of these big footprints. And all of us kind of started not not exactly running away from each other, but we were just kind of walking away. We are, we're all standing together, but all of us kind of like looking around in amazement. And I remember I kind of walked away from my parents maybe I don't know, 25, 30 feet. 
And I saw this huge footprint, and I actually dropped down in the moss onto my knees. And I was just tracing it with my finger, and I was just looking at it, and I put my hand in it, and, and, and I just could not believe it. I was like, what? What is this? You know what I mean? I'm oh, seven yeah. years old. <laughs> yeah, I'm know. seven years old. So, you know, I, I didn't know what a Bigfoot was. I didn't never heard the terminology. I'd never heard one person ever mention it in Oregon. To my level of understanding, there was never such a creature, and there was never such a name, and there was never such a creature. It didn't exist, and I had no knowledge or conception of that. Of that. So I, I'm trying to make, you know, like, what is this? And then I remember my mom, you know, she was saying to my my dad, you know, she said, Jim, what are what are these prints? What is this? You know, and my dad, you know, he when he couldn't explain something, it's like I'll I'll believe it when I see it kind of guy. Sure. And he got frustrated, you know. And I think my father was bipolar because sometimes he snapped and he and he really got angry a lot. And he's like, Louise, I don't know, you know, I don't know. Let's go, you know. It made him mad. And he goes, "There's probably somebody with with something on their foot, and they're walking." This is what he told us: something, somebody walking around out here and with different sized feet and putting stuff on their feet, and they're trying to scare somebody. Okay, really? Of course. Like again, I'm seven years old, and later on, you know, I'm thinking to myself, "Wait a minute." Why would anybody put something on their feet and walk around and make these kind of prints when nobody ever went out here? You know, plus on top of that, there was a kind of a funky, I remember this, it was kind of a foulish, funky smell. It wasn't really strong to the point where it'd make you sick, Mm -hmm. but it was kind of hanging in the air. And, you know, once again, you know, after years and years down the road, you're going, oh, my Lord, that thing was out there. Or they were, you know, probably out there watching us. Probably close by. Yeah. I mean, but you think, you know, of course, here again, I, I mean, none of us know anything. So we went back across the house because we're, we're looking at this. And my dad's got the idea that we're going to take rakes and we're going to take a hoe out there. And we're going to, and each Saturday, we're going to make a project. And as we're, we're fencing, you know, the back five for horses, we're going to go across the street and spend some time every weekend um, digging and hoeing. And we're going to make trails for motorcycles and horses, right? Because it's perfect. You can just, the county's not using it. They're not going to care. It's not fenced, you know, and, and it's perfect, you know. So we're we're trying to do all this, you know. And we were never harmed. But, like, once again, I'm looking back and I'm thinking, I'm thinking somebody wasn't very happy. <laughs> we were cutting down all the trees. You probably not. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm not, that's what I'm thinking. So, uh but in any event, so we we had a lot of strange things. I would hear branches breaking at night. I was always got woke up in my sleep. Branches breaking, stomping around, scraping on the side of the house, you know, things of that nature. Um, and and then we got the horses, and you know things continued, you know, just and then we started to notice that there was this howling, kind of a howling, uh, yeah, I'm going to call it a howl, every night, every evening at sunset. Mm -hmm. Every evening at sunset, when the sun was going down, these howls, and it would go on and on for maybe, oh, I don't know, I'm going to say 10 minutes. And then it stopped. Once the sun went down, and once it was dark, it stopped. But, um, you know, you always, even as a kid, you know, any kid's going to hear something like that, you know, and you're like, what is that, you know? Right. But but we, we didn't, we never knew, you know, never knew. And I asked my mom, and she didn't have any answers, you know. And 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 so in any event, you know, we we went on with our lives, you know, and we had, my dad was strict and we had to have homework in and, you know, just you're busy with your life. We're still trying to clean up the, you know, leftover wood, you know, that, that they need to be split logs that were, you know, out in the pasture and, uh, fence posts that somehow on occasion would find themselves. And I don't know if I told you this, I think I did in the last show, but it's been a long time. Well, mm-hmm. 
but those thin fence posts and some of those cut up chunks of trees would find themselves scattered somehow, or they would be thrown on the other side of the pasture. So they were they were stacked and, up, and then you'd find them tossed around. Yeah, because my, my dad my dad was military, and he was really meticulous. And everything, I mean, we got in trouble if our house, I mean, we had to have quarters bounce off our beds, and mm-hmm. he'd do inspections on us. But let me tell you what, when when he, he did the, the fences, all before he left the project or that we went home, you know, back into the house, all those fence posts and everything had to be stacked nice and neat until they were all used up or he decided what he was going to do with them, right? Mm-hmm. Well, he started accusing us, you know, me or the boys, of playing around and throwing those posts around, you know? And it's like, why would we do something like that? But that was his logic. It's like, you kids better stop um, messing around with these posts and, you know, throwing them around. And he goes, I'm going to get the belt out if, you you know, if, if it doesn't quit, you know, this kind of deal. It's like... Dad, you know, we didn't do it, you know, and it's like, why would anybody come in here? Why would somebody come in here? You know what I mean? Still, you know, being ignorant, ignorant meaning we didn't know. Sure. I had no knowledge of what was going on. I mean, I'm looking back once again, and I'm like, oh, oh, oh. Exactly. they, yeah, you know, they're all over that pasture, you know. But uh, and so in, in any event, so here we go to 1969. I'm just going to jump forward. I'm just trying to kind of set the stage for it, hearing all sorts of stuff. Oh, my, I know what it was that I forgot to tell you. So my dad um, uh, just notices that we got deer around, and he he likes animals, so he decides to take our horse's alfalfa and put it in the backyard that's open, you know. Mm-hmm. You can just come off the street and just walk around the back of the house, you know. And he put a salt lick out there and a tub of water and he put, uh, you know, bales of alfalfa out there and like, yeah, we can just watch the deer now, you know, and they'll come and eat and we'll just feed them, <laughs> you know. Well, you know, sometimes Bigfoot like, you know, <laughs> like, like to eat deer, you know, oh, sometimes they'll take deer. And do. I don't know if that was a, <laughs> an attraction, you know. <laughs> so oh, this was, yeah, there you go. See, so... um Oh, it was 1969, and it was in uh, October, and we had had an early snow. It, it it snowed early, and it wasn't a big snow. It was only like, it was about maybe just a blanket. I'm going to say maybe a half an inch, and it was, I mean, it was already, you know, kind of, it was crusty, but it was already starting to melt a little bit. It hadn't been, like, snowed the night before, and it was already starting to dissipate a little bit, you know. But uh, I had gone out and ridden my horse like I did every I come home from school and I do my chores and and then I'm like, oh, I was horse crazy. So I'm like, oh, I've got to go ride my horse. So I did everything I was supposed to do so I didn't get in trouble. And uh, I'm out there saddling that horse up and I'm gone and I'm going to ride. You know, I get to I get to go ride for about an hour and a half or two hours and then I got to get that horse cooled down brushed down and cleaned up because my dad was really strict about the grooming of, and the care of horses. So he taught us, you know, you're going to do this right or I'm going to sell these horses. So anyway, I get him all put away, cool down and I get him fed. And, um, and, I, and, and by then, you know, it's like four, four, four thirty somewhere in there. And it was kind of where you guys know what I'm talking about. You know where it's, start, it, it, it's starting to get dark, but it's still light. Right. And it's kind of like, I want to call it twilight. Exactly. You know, it's just kind of, but you can still see. Where it's just kind of changing. Yes, exactly. There you go. It's just kind of changing, and it's a little bit more on the darkest side, but you can still see. You can still see everything, you know. Mm-hmm. Well, anyway, there was this show I like to watch, and I, I'm, I'm sure you're going to laugh when I tell you, because I think I told you anyway before um, that show. Does anybody um, remember the show F Troop? Right, right. <laughs> okay, so I like to laugh. And, you know, my dad was really strict, and sometimes we lived a kind of a hard life, and then and, and that was uh, something I like to watch. I like to laugh. So I run in there, you know, I wash my hands, and I run in there, and I grab a, a, a wooden chair, and I drag it to the this big picture window of the house that faced 224th, which 
face directly across the street in that county property. Now, also I want to stop for a second and uh, remind you, Will, and tell you remember that the, the Fort Lewis Reservation is to my right of that house. Yeah, it's just on the other side of the mountain highway. I mean, if you look it up, if you Google Earth it, it's like, what, a city block and a half? I mean, it's literally right there. Yeah, the, the, the fence parallels the uh, highway there, and the signs, you know, they say that it's a military reservation. Yeah, that's correct, and it runs for miles and miles and miles. Oh, yeah. And uh, I would go in there with my horse. I would go in there with my horse, and I had a few interesting incidences out there, and I probably shouldn't have been riding my horse alone, but you know, I did it all the time. It probably wasn't the best idea, but um, in any event, so I, I took that chair, and I drug it up to... Uh, the picture window and I lean the chair back on two legs and I'm leaning against the window. I've got my shoulders, you know, over the top of the back of that chair and I'm leaning against the window and I've got my arms crossed and I'm watching this and uh, I'm getting into the show and I'm laughing. Well, you know, I'm laughing and I look, you know, outside and it's just, I, I don't know how to explain this to anybody. I mean, it, it ha- has to make sense to somebody out there or maybe to you. But it's like I saw it, but I didn't see it. Mm-hmm. And as I'm looking forward, I looked back, and I, all of a sudden my brain flashed something in my head. I saw a picture that flashed. This is what you just saw, and I saw the image of this thing. And I'm sitting there thinking to myself, did I just see something? Is that what I just saw? Is, that, is there something out there? You know, and I, my mind's beginning to race, you know, and I'm like, what? And, I, and I'm realizing that I just saw something. Well, so I thought, okay, I'm, I'm trying to, you know, try and, by then I'm 14 years old, okay? And by then I'm trying to process this whole thing. And I'm like, you have to look. You have to look. This is what I'm telling myself. You have to look. You can't not look. There's something there. You have to see it. You have to look. And, um, and so I slowly turned my head. And there was this creature standing right at the window. Now, the only thing between that plate glass window and me was this little brick. See, way back in the 50s, you know, in the 60s, they used to build these houses where sometimes they would build um, planter boxes Uh, right. right up against the house, right? And it was made of brick, and it was only like, I don't know, a foot and a half, like a foot and a half or a foot and a half. I don't even know if it was two feet. Yeah, they weren't very big. Yeah, they weren't very big, but it was just this little planter box that was made of brick, and it was it was it had been built right up against the house, and um, that was the only thing between me and that thing, and it was leaning over, staring at me, and I was just I couldn't move. My eyes were locked on because, and I started to feel. All, I, I remember to this day, I, I, I could feel the, the blood just draining from my face. And I think I was going into shock. I think that that's basically what was happening to me. Back, back then, I, I didn't know what was happening to me. I didn't know why I couldn't move. I, I, I was so terrified. I was in so much fear. I, I tried to move, and I couldn't move. And we just locked eyes. And I saw before me this huge creature that was gray he was he was gray and he had red eyes and he just he looked really disgusted <laughs> i don't know how else kind of a meanish piercing like staring at me really intently now i don't know if i caught him by accident mm-hmm. but from what all the experience that i've had up until this day um, I really have to retract that and say, I don't think that I, at one point in time, I'd said, maybe I caught it by accident or I agreed with other people that it was trying to get past me and I caught it by accident. I have to retract that because I think that it was, I think they, they let you see them when they want to be seen. Sure. And so if there was some reason, this one, I don't know if he'd been following me around on my horse while I've been riding. I, I, I don't know the answer to that, but I couldn't move and I couldn't get out of that chair. 
and I thought it was going to kill me. I here I was at 14 years old, and my mind, my mind could work, but my muscles, my neck, my shoulders, I couldn't get out of the chair. And I kept saying, "Leap!" I kept telling myself, "Get out! Get out! Just go! Just jump!" And it's like the muscles wouldn't move. My body would not respond. So I was paralyzed. I w- I had to have been, but I-, I could not move. I was literally frozen right there in that spot, looking at that thing. And he he was looking down at me. Just I mean, my dad was a burly man. He was he was he was a he was a big burly man. And this thing made my dad look like a midget. I mean, that's how I felt at that time. I mean, that my dad was small compared to this thing. And his, he had cannonball at ball shoulders, just cannonball. They were, they were huge mm-hmm. shoulders, you know? And, 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 and I mean, I was absolutely, you know, and so I, I realized that I could look, you know, and I, I could look at him and I started just studying him. You know, I broke his, I broke my eye contact with him, but I still couldn't move. And I just started letting my, and it didn't move. And it still didn't move. And I, I was looking at his shoulders and I was looking at his chest. And I let my, I let my eyes go down and look at his arms. And I suddenly realized his arms, you know, went down below his knees. Mm -hmm. And I noticed, you know, how muscular this thing really was and his, how his, uh, torso was bigger (laughs) disproportionate see now i can say it after all these years and all this experience but it was i i noticed how his legs were not as long for the size of his body that i thought it should be right so here you've got this massive muscular torso these cannonball shoulders these long arms you know and these, he was this gray color with little pieces of like lighter gray, almost white along his neck and a a few wisps of it and the top of his chest. And then he was covered with uh, these sparse uh, brown and black hairs Mm -hmm. all all over him. It was, it was on his arms and everything. Um, You know, I noticed that on his knuckles, you know, he, some of the hair there was, it was thinner on the top of his hands and they were turned, you know, to the back of him. They were turned to the back. They weren't turned to the side. They were turned to the back. And, but I could see that his skin was like a dark gray. Mm -hmm. His skin was a dark gray. And here I'm looking at this thing and this thing still isn't, isn't moving. But when I first saw him, I mean, he was just heaving and there was steam coming out of, you know, his nostrils. There was steam just coming out and he had hair all over his face. This guy was hairy. Mm-hmm. I mean, there was long, long hair. And he wasn't, you know, the curious thing about it is, is that I don't know when I first did a show, I, I don't, I don't remember now. Was that the last show I did with you? Was that in 2012? I believe so. Yes. That was with, uh, yeah, that, that other show. But uh, there was, uh, that, I don't remember everything that I said to you then. I'm trying to recall everything that I said to you. That's, but there was, right. there, yeah, there was, um, he was, this thing was, did not, you know, a lot of people say, if you tell them, well, he, he didn't, he wasn't matted and muddy and there wasn't clumps of dirt all over him. Mm -hmm. If I say this thing looked, you know, like he was, he was not dirty. He wasn't, you know, didn't look exactly like he'd been groomed with the comb, but he didn't look, he wasn't matted. His hair wasn't wrapped around itself and matted. Mm -hmm. I don't know the answer to why that was, you know, I don't, under, you know, I don't know. I still to this day don't know why, and I never really questioned it. It just it was what it was. You know what I'm saying? Right. That that's just what I saw, and um, and so I thought I was going to die that day. I thought it was. I would. I mean, it literally could have just taken its arm and lifted its arm and broke the glass and just taken my head off. 
And here, my mom and my sisters are in the kitchen, talking away, chattering, you know, they're getting ready for dinner, you know, my dad expected that, you know, we had to have dinner on a certain time, and um, and I'm hearing them, and I can't even say help. I couldn't even speak to say, somebody please help me come quickly, you know, there was nothing I could do. And it just stood there. And looking at me with these red eyes, and I felt like he was looking right through me. Kind of like you're locking eyes with somebody and you get the overall feeling. It To me, it almost was, it felt like he was looking at me like he, he knew all about me. You know, it was, it, it, it was a crazy feeling. I felt like he was just looking right into my soul. And it just, there was nothing I could do. I couldn't get away. And finally, after I don't know how long I sat there like that, I kept talking to myself, get out, get out, just get out, just jump out of the chair. I kept telling my mind, just, you can do that. I was in gymnastics. I was very, you know, Mm -hmm. I was very athletic. And I I, I couldn't move. (laughs) I'm telling myself, get out, just jump out of the chair, just get out, just, just back up, fall on the floor, do anything, get out of that chair, get away from that thing, you know? And, uh, Uh, Finally, uh, after I I don't know how long, I I started, I could feel my uh, muscles contracting in my hands, in my fists, you know, Mm -hmm. and uh, uh, after after that, I was able to, but I I told myself, you got to turn your head first. You can't jump until you turn your head away from that thing. Do you know how scared I was? How, if anybody could even begin to fathom what that felt like as a kid, 14-year-old kid, oh, yeah. seeing something that they never knew existed and something that gigantic, to try to turn your head away from it when it's standing there and try to get away from it. Especially that that's so frightening that I, I, yeah, I mean, I'm sure that you understand that, that, what that might have felt like. And so I was able finally to, you know, stumble out of the chair. And when I stood up, I, I just stood there for a minute. And then I got finally stumbled to the kitchen and my mom comes around the corner and she goes, Rebecca? Rebecca, what's wrong with you? You know, what's she goes, and then my sister came around. Well, what's the matter with you? What's the matter? Look at her. She's why is the sheet? What's wrong with you? And I, I, I couldn't, I still couldn't talk. And then, and then I started to cry. And it's like the letdown, you know, the finally being able, you know, and I just bawled and I still couldn't talk. I just convulsively bawled for I don't know how long. And I finally said, that thing, that thing out there, that thing out there, you know? And they're like, what thing out where? You know what I mean? And, and by that time, it had gone. It was, it was gone by then. And, uh, and so my mom, I told her what I'd seen, and she's like, what, you know? And she would just kept staring at me like, what are you talking about, you know? And I'm like, it's out there. It was out there. I saw it. I saw it, you know? And so she went out there, and she goes, well, I'm going to go out there and look behind No, Mom, don't go out there. Don't go out there. Please don't go out there, you know? <laughs> this is what I was going through. I mean, literally, please don't go. Please don't look at you. Please, Mom, don't go out there, you know? And so she did. She went out there anyway, and she found, you know, where uh, there was mud, you know, there's there, uh, the ground had been disturbed. And, and she goes, well, there is something out here. So, I mean, there there was something out here, but I don't know what it was. And she just kind of dismissed it, you know? Oh, yeah. And, um you know, and, I, and and the crazy thing about this whole deal is my father and my two brothers were in the backyard chopping wood. So guess what? That thing had to have come from across the street, okay, had come across the street and look, took a look at me or come from the side of the house where the woods were and looked at me then and taken off either to the side of the house and to the woods next to the house or gone back across the street. Because as I turned my head, I heard a, a, a car screech to a halt. And it's like you're hearing something in your brain, but you're just, I mean, I was so terrified. All I wanted to do is get away. But I remember hearing a car skidding to a halt and then taking off real fast. Wow. And then once again, looking, looking back, I'm thinking that thing, that thing took off in front of somebody. Somebody saw it. They took off across the street, went back over there, and it ran right out in front of somebody. So somebody else saw it, somebody, you know, but nobody else ever did come to the house and knock on the door and say, can I talk to you? 
you yeah. know, no, that never happened. <laughs> but back then, you got made fun of. You didn't bring up stuff like that, like oh, I yeah. saw you know, something, you know. And uh, I tried to talk to my mom later, and she's like, you know, if he, I don't know if he, we need to talk about this. I, 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 I don't want you, you know, your father to catch you and I talking about something like that because it's going to make your dad mad, you know. And then, and then you're going to scare the other kids too. And you, you need to be, you need to stop talking about this right now, you know. And I said, but mom, you know, you know, thing is, and, and so here we go, and it's the next morning. I'm like, mom, mom, wake up, mom, wake up. Can you go with me to, to feed the horses, please? You walk out there with me to feed the horses. I mean, literally, it was like that, you know. I don't want to go alone, please, please. That thing might get me, mom. You know, so you know what your dad said. If you if, if he catches you not feeding that horse at six o'clock, he's gonna f- sell your horse. And I cried. I just I was terrified, you know. And so I would pray to God, you know, and I would say, God, please help me, protect me, send your angels to protect me because because I don't want to die out there, you know. Please help me, you know. And I would just take one step in front of the other because I love those horses so much. I loved horses so much. I the last thing in the world I ever want is for my dad to sell my horses, you know. And so. I went out there. My mom went out there a few times with me, but she was busy with the other kids and there was school and and, and she just, you know, like, go on out there. You're all right. You know, that kind of deal. So, so that's what I did, you know, but every day for a long time was, was like terror to me. And I, you know, I quit doing anything. I just, I didn't want to go out in the woods. I didn't want to ride my horse out in the woods. And then six weeks, weeks later, um, it was about six weeks later. It was on a Saturday morning. It was actually, um, you know, it was clear. It wasn't rainy. It wasn't, you know. And I'm sitting there Indian style. And my, and, and back then, you know, girls my age played paper dolls. You know, oh, <laughs> and sure. I know that sounds stupid now. But back then, it was a different era. And you did different things. In my, and I was very, um, my dad was very strict and very protective. And we weren't allowed to go anywhere or do any, anything much. You know, we had our horses and motorcycles and you know, we were expected to, you know, live this sheltered life. Well, um, so I was sitting here Indian style facing my in my sister's room and in her room were was a, a, a large window that was the bedroom window that faced out toward the horses, uh the back the back five, and then the other window on the other corner, you know, faced the side of the house, you know, and there was woods there too. Well, I'm I'm sitting here playing paper dolls and my sister starts arguing with me about, you know, which doll or which <laughs> which uh, wardrobe piece she wanted to put on her doll because I'd picked it up and she started arguing with me and I went to talk to her and say you know what are you doing how come I can't have that you know and I and I and I'm and here goes my sister's back was turned to that window and um, I just you know I, I, I keep telling asking myself why me why, did, why couldn't have my sister been sitting in a different place where she could have seen that too? But she didn't see it. She felt the vibration, but she didn't see it. And here goes a smaller one, Will. A smaller one, Will. I'm sitting Indian style on the floor. I think the window was probably, I'm thinking, uh, I don't remember now. It was like two, two and a half feet up from the floorboard. Mm-hmm. And I'm, and I'm sitting on the floor, right? So this thing just casually lopes by. Boom, 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 boom. Arms swinging. And I'm looking at the side of its face. And it looked just like its dad. The same color. It had chunky little arms, you know, beefy, you know. And its, it's little nose was kind of pushed in. It didn't have a lot of hair on its face like dad did. It was more fuzzy. It's more fuzzy, but um, it was still, you know, the same color. And he didn't even didn't even look in the window at me. Just went on by his business, run right by the the bedroom, and I'm just following it with my face. If you can imagine looking at my face with my mouth open, and I'm looking in in in, in utter shock, and I'm watching this. Want run past, you know, not fast, just kind of run past, boom, 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 you know, past the window and then the other window, and I, I don't know where it went. I don't know if it went across the street or it went farther into the woods, you know, once it got past the house. I don't know where it went, but 
Good I Lord. just sit there and I, and I was looking out the window. I was looking out the window and I was just staring like I can't in my head. I was thinking, I can't believe this. There's more than one. There's more than one. And my sister looked at me. She goes, what's the matter with you? And I looked at her and I said, Roxanne, I said, didn't you feel that? She goes, I don't know. Yeah, what was that? And I just looked at her and I thought, I knew I was going to get in trouble for my dad. And I just looked at her and I went, oh, never mind. Never mind. Let's just play, you know. And she goes, what? And I go, never mind, okay? Just never mind. You know, I thought I saw something. That's what I told her. I thought I saw something. Well, what did you see? Nothing. Let's just play. And I never did tell her. Wow. Yeah, never did tell her. You know, what I never happens. did. Because, well, what could I say? If I told her, she'd go tell my mom, and then my mom would tell my dad, or if she told one of, one of my brothers, my brother goes straight to my dad. And, you know, guess what? My dad's going to pull the belt out, and guess who's going to be standing there? Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> But I knew I had to keep my mouth shut, you know, and I was, I was terrified. I was like, why am I seeing this? Oh, my Lord, my poor horses. I wonder if they're going to hurt my horses. Oh, my gosh, there's more than one. You mean there's a family out here? My mind was racing. And so um, went to the school library. Uh, once I could get a hold of myself, I thought, there's any information. Does anybody know anything? How come there isn't anything on the news? I'm, what is going on? How come I'm seeing this and I don't hear anybody talking about anything? What is this thing? So I go to the school library. I think it was, it took me like two weeks um, after school because I'd stay after school for gymnastics, you know, a couple times a week. And uh, I found this book. I found this book way in the back. It was an old ratty book. And um, there's a picture of, what was the name of that book? Wasn't wasn't that Ivan no. Sanderson's book? Because I I'm pretty sure yeah. we probably saw the same book in the same school. <laughs> yeah, it might have been Ivan. It might have been Ivan Sanders, and it showed it showed a white um, Bigfoot, and it was about you know, and, and it was called the uh, it was about the uh, out in the Himalayas, but it wasn't yeah, the, called uh, Bigfoot. Uh, abominable Snowman Legend Come to Life. Abominable Snowman. That's what it was. Abominable was, Snowman. Wasn't it the only book Bethel had on on the. <laughs> Well, that was it. this book. I can't I, believe you saw the same one, oh, I and I couldn't believe they actually had that book. I, I and so I saw it, and they, I checked the same book out after I, I found footprints out in Graham and had my own sighting. <laughs> that is so funny. Well, that's the book, and I, I I checked it out, and I would sit there in astoundment, and I hid it. I checked it out, and I hid it, and you know. I hid it so so my dad and my mom wouldn't find it, and I and I would go in my room and I would just open it up and look at it, and I was and I and I started to cry, and I'm like, and I, I know this sounds you need to laugh about this now, but I said to myself, how did that thing? Seriously, this is what I thought. How did that thing get all the way from the Himalayas <laughs> into my backyard? <laughs> Because I didn't know. <laughs> it's funny. It's hilarious now. But back then, I was terrified. It was like, it came over here. Why did it come to my house? You know? And uh, I didn't understand that they're all around me. Oh, I didn't yeah. know that the forest around me and the Fort Lewis, you know, was chock full of them and oh, yeah. still is, by the way. Still is, by the way. And the military knows it, too. Um which is one of the reasons why it's now fenced, but you'll never get that out of them. Sure. Um, uh, it wasn't to keep people out. It was to keep try to keep something in, and there's other stories I've got about that fence. Well, but, listen, um, we, we are running a little short of time. I'd like to do a second part because you have a lot more to talk about. Oh, okay. Would, I would, do talk too much, don't I? No, I, I no, spend a lot of time actually, explaining. it's great. W- would that be okay with you? <laughs> Sure, that would be fine. Okay, well, we'll plan on that. Um, Just remind me where I left off. <laughs> absolutely. Well, that's what I was thinking, because I remember you telling me so much more, and I thought, okay, since we're running short on time, this is a great place to stop, because it'll be easy to remember where we stopped. <laughs> uh, there, 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 There's a lot more. You can ask me about the camping trailer. Oh, yeah. Um, the trailers the, and, and some other my, stuff. My brothers who yeah, my brothers who decided to pitch a tent and him and him and some friends went out in that 
county property across the street and pitched a tent and right. decided they were going to have a sleepover. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, let's definitely do that then. Okay, that sounds good. Thanks for listening to this episode of Creek Devil. If you or anyone you know has had an encounter with these creatures, please contact us at williamjevning at yahoo.com. That's William, J-E-V-N-I-N-G, at yahoo.com. All communication is confidential. Join us for another program next week. And until then, keep your eyes open out there.